We're going to take a look at using digital and analog pins for reading inputs and controlling outputs. But first, we need to create a circuit using a breadboard, an LED, a resistor, a button and some jumper wires. If this is your first time building a circuit, don't worry at all. We'll take a look at everything that's going on here, what these things are and how you can use them. A breadboard is a very simple yet useful piece of gear. Its name originates from times when circuit prototypes would be made using a wooden board, typically, yes, used for cutting bread, with nails or tacks hammered in to solder to. This method has evolved into what we've seen today, which is far more sophisticated in the form of the solderless breadboard. You can see I've got one on this SparkFun Inventors Kit. It comes with a nice plastic base. It's a half size breadboard and has the Arduino right next to it so you can easily get prototyping. Now, a typical breadboard consists of a 0.1 inch space grid of holes in which you can place component leads, which is 0.1 inch or 2.54 millimeter. It's the most common format for through hole components. And inside each hole is a spring loaded metal contact which grabs the wire or lead. Strips of these holes are connected together to allow components to be connected. Almost every breadboard will have numbered rows of five holes which are connected together and every row is electrically isolated. Also, many of them have power rail strips where all of the holes in the rail are connected together which makes it really easy to power your circuit because you can break out that single 5 volt pin or the handful of ground pins that are found on an Arduino board. So let's take a bit more of a look at how they work. So, a typical breadboard, a nice almost rectangular shape, will have a series of rows and each of these rows has five holes in them and they are all connected that way so you can see on the breadboard here or in the image on the text area that there's five rows and they're all connected to each other so if I put a leg of a component here use the red one leg of a component there it's going to be connected if I put a leg of a component there they're going to be connected because there is an electrical connection running through those holes but this row is completely isolated from that row. They're not connecting at all. So if you wanted to connect these two rows together, you would first need to get a small jumper or a piece of wire or something like that and connect two of the holes together. Now, another handy thing about breadboards, most full half mini sized ones are going to have a divider down the middle. And this is usually two uh, or 0 0.2 inches or two standard uh, pitch units across. And then on the other side, you'll also find rows with five holes in them. And these are really handy for when you're using integrated circuits, uh, op amps, timers, things like that, because they perfectly straddle that center divider and go into the first lot of holes there. And you can put a pin there, pin there, pin there, pin there, say for a dip eight package and every leg is now isolated from each other. Really, really handy. Now, another feature that most breadboards will have, which is super, super useful, is power rails. And you'll see these running down the side here. Well, you'll see the grid, the dots. And again, these are spaced out into five sets of 0.1 inch pins, or 2.54 millimeters as well, that go, there's holes here as well, and then there'll be a break, and then another set of five holes. And the beauty of this is that these are connected that way, which means you can, as we were talking about before, you can take a five volt wire from your Arduino, say, plug it into one of the holes here. They're usually colored red and blue or red and black, something like that. So you can take a wire, plug it in there, and suddenly every hole on that strip will have access to five volts. So you can take a jumper wire from there, over onto your circuit, and that's gonna have five volts on it as well. Very handy, and likewise, the black line allows you to connect ground. And there's also gonna be one on this side, but these are again isolated from each other, so they're not connected. That's not supposed to run through that hole, nor that. So you could have a one voltage here and another voltage there. You might wanna have common ground, so you would run a jumper wire. Let's try black to make it all consistent over to there, so that your grounds are the same, so you can connect both sides to ground, but you might have five volts here, and then take the 3.3 volt tap from your Arduino board perhaps, if you have components that run on 3.3 volts. Really, really cool. Now, be warned, something that tricks people every time. A half-size breadboard like this, the power rail is connected all the way down. 
However, a full-size breadboard, which is roughly double the length of that, will have a slightly larger break in the power rails in the middle. Now this is where people get stuck. That is isolated. So these run of, uh, run of holes and these run of holes are isolated from each other. And you can use a small jump wire. I think it's a 0 uh, 0.2 inches or two standard spacings in that divide. However, you're going to have to jump that if you want power to run all the way down. Now that's only on the bigger full size breadboards, but just something to keep in mind. Now that you know how a breadboard works, let's use it to build the first circuit of the workshop. Exciting stuff. We're going to be connecting an LED and a push button together, which we'll be using to go to the Arduino board for the digital read and digital write functions. In the next section, we'll be putting these into practice, but for now, let's get it working. So we're going to draw up a schematic. Now, a schematic is a fancy word for an electrical circuit in symbols. It's not a physical layout of how the circuit will look when it's on a printed circuit board, but it's designed to really clearly and easily show what is connected to where and how the circuit works. So if you look at a circuit board like the Arduino, it's very confusing and hard to see where everything is going. It's doable, but only if you have a lot of time and patience. A schematic will really clearly outline everything. So we're gonna take a look at our first circuit. Now, there's a few symbols that we're gonna be using here. A resistor, and that is the schematic symbol for a resistor. Some jagged lines or squiggly lines. We're going to be using an LED. Now an LED has the same schematic symbol as a diode for line there. However, it has two small arrows going outwards to indicate that it is illuminating light. And a button, now there's lots of different schematic symbols for a button, but generally we'll treat it as a standard switch, which has two contacts, usually shown open, uh, so that you can tell that it's a switch and just not another piece of wire. And then we're going to use lines to connect them all up to each other. So let's take a look, move over to this side here. So the first thing we need is our two Arduino pins. Let's do these in red. Now this is going to be connected to pin two and pin three for our LED. So we're using pin three instead. Now pin three is our LED and the first thing we need is a current limiting resistor. Now, if you're not sure what an LED is, what a resistor is, what a button is, don't worry, I've included some links in the workshop written content to some more articles on all about LEDs, all about electronic components, an analog electronics crash course so that you can get an understanding of how these things work. But a current limiting resistor, simply put, is there to stop the LED drawing too much current and to give it the correct voltage. So if we have our current limiting resistor, then our LED, poorly drawn LED at that. And then that's going to go to ground. Now, ground is an example of five volts, as we were talking about before. When we say zero volts, it's usually referred to as ground. Ground is the reference voltage where everything connects to. And that symbol there, the three lines, or it's also drawn as an upside down uh, triangle or an arrow, is usually called ground. So if we draw another bit of circuit over here, that also has the ground symbol. It means that those two are electrically connected, usually on a ground plane on the PCB or a really thick trace. So that is our LED. We've got a current limiting resistor. We have the positive side of the LED or the more positive side, which connects to a higher voltage and the lower side of the LED, which connects to ground. Now for our button, we're simply going to take this guy and connect it to ground as well. So those two would be electrically connected. And that's all there is to the schematic that we're gonna be using. So now let's take a look at putting it together on our breadboard. Alrighty, so now that we have an understanding of how the circuit works and how everything connects up, let's actually put that into practice on our breadboard and get everything connected up so that we can move on to using digital inputs and outputs. So there's an image of the wiring diagram and how you can connect everything up in the resources section of the workshop. And again, as mentioned before, I'm gonna be using a Spark Fun Inventors kit and every circuit in this workshop can be followed and built using one of these kits. So first up, I've got my Arduino Uno with a breadboard on the plate here. Again, you can use a different Arduino board or get that 
spaced nicely. You can use a different Arduino board, a different size breadboard. You don't have to use this particular one. The Spark Fun Inventors Kit is a great place to get started. So let's use a red LED, I think. Red is a good color. So we have our LED. Now I'll position the breadboard like this so you can see how I'm following the wiring diagram. So first up, you'll notice that the LED has two legs, one that is longer and one that is shorter than the other. And this is because one side of the LED has to be more positive than the other in order to allow current to flow. It's a polarized component. And an LED or a diode in general is a bit like an electronic valve. It only allows electrons to flow in one direction. But the LED allows current to flow, allows the electricity to move from one side to the other, and in the process it will light up. Again, check out the linked tutorials for more information on this. But we're going to take the longer leg, or you can identify the negative leg uh, on the epoxy case. You can see one flattened side, one side that's a little flatter than the other, that is the negative side. So I'm going to put this into the breadboard here. I'm going to use these two rows that are adjacent to each other, make sure it's pushed down nice and securely so it makes a good connection with the contacts. Now the next thing we need is a current limiting resistor. Now you can work out the value of these current limiting resistors, there's only some simple maths and using Ohm's law. Again, LEDs tutorial to do that, but a really good safe value, especially when driving it from a microcontroller, is going to be 330 ohms, there's a bag of them in the SparkFun Inventors kit. And this is to stop our LED drawing too much current and burning out. So let's fold the legs up on these guys and we're going to take that from our positive pin, our LED over to there and I'm gonna grab out some jumper wires. The jumper wires are just wires. They're just bits of wire with uh, contacts on the end that are designed to plug in really well to 0.1 inch or 2.5 four millimeters again to those sized connections on breadboards or on header pins, things like that. So take your jump wires. I'm going to use red ones for wiring up power and then dark colors for wiring up ground and we'll look at some signals later. So from the leg of the resistor, remember that that's connecting to our Arduino. Let's plug that into pin three. Now I'm going to take a blue wire, plug that into the negative leg of our LED and connect that up to this negative power rail here. Take a push button. These are nice, they've got a really good plastic cap on the top so they're easy to push with your fingers. We'll take a, a green one, for example, and I'm going to use that to straddle that center divide. Now with the push button, you'll note that there's two sets of connections on it. You only need to connect up one of these, it's so it can be really stable if it's mounted in a breadboard. Uh, so we just need one side and the side that has both legs on it makes the switch. So we need to sh short these together when we're pressing it and then they'll be isolated when we're not pressing it. Press that in nice and firmly into our breadboard. Check that it's gone in properly. Yep, fantastic. Now we need a jump wire. We're going to be connecting one leg of our button to ground to zero volts and the other leg will use a yellow wire doesn't matter what color you use it just helps you keep track of things we're going to use a yellow wire to take that to uh, digital pin two fantastic so now we just need to connect the ground of our arduino board up to the ground rail here of our breadboard all right, so now everything's connected up. It looks a little messy. There's jumper wires going everywhere. But if you look back to the schematic uh, circuit that we drew before, you can see how everything connects up. And I'll put that in the section resources as well. So there you go, everything's connected up on the breadboard and we have our circuit ready to go for using some digital inputs and outputs. If you have any questions on this or you can't get your breadboard working, remember that we're here to help. So post a picture of your breadboard, some information about the problem, uh, post it in the comments there and we'll get right onto it and help you get started with your first circuit.